And this is Sarah Fuentes and Lisa Ann, the founder of Women in Clean Tech and Sustainability. How are you today, Lisa? I'm doing pretty good. It's a special day. Yes, it is. We're here to talk to you and everyone about our 10-year anniversary. And I have the privilege of talking to Lisa today and kind of uh, kind of reminiscing. I get to reminisce with my friend here uh, around the history of women in clean tech and sustainability. And this is a real crucial point for us. And uh, Lisa, I wanted to ask you, uh, do, can you remember the first WCS event? So I, I had made a New Year's resolution that I wanted to start this organization. And I sat with it for about a year and a half to two years, maybe more, thinking that I would, I would create it and then, oh, somebody else will do something better. And finally, I was like, you know what? I just have to do this. So on January 1st, uh, 2011, I set up Meetup and I set up the first event for January 18th. And it was very simple, mix and mingle. And let's all get together at a restaurant. We met at Hoya in Palo Alto, which is a Spanish tapas restaurant. And it was really great. We had some drinks. I ordered some appetizers. And we just talked and met each other. Tell me why women in clean tech and sustainability was on the forefront and on your mind. At the time, uh, I, it had been about two years since I had formed my company, Technica Communications. And I was going to a lot of you know, co-ed networking events. Uh, where I, it would be me and maybe five other women in the room. And so we would naturally gravitate towards each other. At the same time, I was going to uh, female entrepreneurship events. And I think you and I met at a uh, mm -hmm. Women Entrepreneurs of the Bay Area event a couple of years prior. Exactly. As you know, those were great. Like the networking mm -hmm. was really wonderful and uh, the people were very supportive. It was very uplifting, inspiring. And I wanted to bring these two worlds together, clean tech and sustainability and the sisterhood and the, the joy and fun that came from networking with the majority of women in a room. I attended an event, I think it was in August, in also Palo Alto at the three seasons outside on the patio in the nice summer day. And I tell you what, that, that was a, a really cool, fun event as well. And I was thinking to myself, wow, I want to hang out with these, with these women because uh, I not only was I able to get some really valuable connections, but I felt like we had a uh, common goal. I felt like we all had a similar interest and also just um, the, the informalities at, of it at that time, right? One of our tendencies is that we want to have fun. We're all volunteers. Yes. This is this is like play, right? Even a panel that we're going to have is going to be fun. And I think that's really important. That's part of our DNA and part of our culture. And I think that's people really recognize that when they come and hang out at our events, they really enjoy them because we're just we're here to have fun and be supportive. Now, Lisa, let me ask you this question. Ten years ago today, did you imagine that we would be where we are now in almost 10 countries, in, in over 10 states, uh, growing to be an international organization, influencing women, and also providing opportunities for women to find their dream jobs, uh, setting a platform for mentorship? Did you imagine uh, that we would be where we are now 10 years ago? In my wildest dreams, I thought we might get here, but it might take 20 years. I, I had no idea that we would grow this quickly and um, this broadly. Uh, and I really have to thank the pandemic for that in a way. Because, you know, we all, people were always asking us to do virtual events, and we didn't want to take it on because we felt like it was going to be very cumbersome and complicated and arduous. But COVID really encouraged us to turning a challenge into an opportunity, right? And we did that. And I think we've done humbly very well, and people love our online events, especially since we spend so much effort in making sure that the networking piece is uh, valuable to people. And we have grown exponentially. And, and really, too, I have to thank the board and all the volunteers because 
it, it took all of us together. Working is like a hive mind doing our things. And that's how we've grown so fast because part of the DNA of the organization is that everybody has agency to take on projects and, and lead initiatives uh, if they want to. And people do want to, and they step up and they do it and they do a great job. For not only myself, but other women in the organization has been able to find, uh, help us find who we are as women leaders, help us find who we are as women entrepreneurs, or help us find who we are in our workplace and, and, and establish how to communicate our voice in a room with maybe other uh, you know, male or other uh, female counterparts where maybe in the past we would be a little timid because we get the practice in these types of events that we uh, host on a weekly basis. We get to practice speaking up and having our voice. And I think um, I really have to thank you, Lisa. I think I thank you for for taking the risk because I'm sure there you had this level of anxiety about taking a risk and starting something new. But now we're fast forward 10 years. Here's our birthday. Happy birthday, W. I know. <laughs> we're going to make some big dreams come true soon. I'm excited. Yes.